So it's May, October 12th. I just hooked up all the uh, parachute and deployment harnesses. So again, the booster section, as we left it with the three rail buttons. What we've done is we've attached with a stainless uh, hook. Not sure if you can see down there. Uh, with the Kevlar strap. And on this is the fire protection uh, for the shock cord. So this goes all the way down the end. So the idea here is down in the rocket where there's the injection charge. Um, this gives you enough length here to keep from burning the Kevlar. Uh, I'm not sure if this is Kevlar or nylon. It's actually maybe nylon, but this is the fire protection here. So with the light, you can see the the clamp, the stainless clamp we did to the U-bolt. Uh, um, so then the nylon strap is hooked onto the clamp, and then we have the shock cord protector. So then we've got at the end of that, tied at about two thirds point, we have the uh, parachute protector. This is a uh, fireproof material that we actually roll the drogue chute. You can see the small drogue chute would roll up into this like a burrito. It's attached with a small stainless hook tied off here. And then the other end, it's the same kind of clip in the booster, but the bottom side of the eBay. So this is the payload section with the eBay. So the idea would be at Apogee, the uh, altimeter would blow the caps here, make this separation point, the drogue chute would come out. We would actually have the uh, ejection charge from the engine about a second behind. That will ignite, so in the event these don't separate or there's a misfire, the uh, engine charge can also blow, make this separation. This will come down with the nose cone still attached to the payload to about 500 feet. Then the main chute comes out. So this is pretty much what you would see coming down most of the way. This with the nose cone still attached at 500 feet. Nose cone comes off and it's injected by the charge. On the eBay, you can see we have the same configuration, the stainless hook and the U-bolt with the nylon, the shock cord protector. Eventually we'll have two canisters. One is the primary and one is the backup that has the black powder, each hooked up to its own altimeter. Charge goes off around 500 feet. It breaks the shear pins. Those comb comes out, pulls out the cord pulls the parachute protector and then that's the main chute uh, much larger and you can see it's attached at the other end of the uh, nose cone um, you can see here where the nylon screws with the shear plates in place would have sheared come apart so the idea is when it comes down, it would look like really this. Imagine the parachute inside the uh, this piece, the drogue chute. Then 500 feet, this comes off. So we basically have this all up here. this up here and then the nose cone the idea is the nose comes tight off where it doesn't come in and bang into the uh, payload section same way with the payload in the main booster we tie it on through so we pick the one-third point that when it's hanging from the point of the chute it doesn't bang in the other piece so there's always two-thirds of nylon between the chute and the lighter. Well, this is basically the whole extension. 
So the last 500 feet, you can see we have probably about 30 feet between nylon, drogue chute, payload, nose cone, and main chute. So this, if it all works right, is what would retract hooks or come out at uh, ejection. Okay, so it's uh, October 17th, Saturday. Uh, this is the day, with any luck, weather permitting, we're going to test uh, flight the Hyperlock. And uh, the plan today would be to test the ejection charges, uh, the black power charges, to make sure they separate the two sections, the main and the um, booster. A booster section with the drogue. Uh, if that works, we'll do a low altitude flight. We'll step down from a 54 millimeter engine casing, which the rocket was designed to hold, which can take us all the way up to an L engine. But we'll step down to a 38, still bigger than what I've shot to date. So right now I've got this chutes taken out and I've taken the eBay out because we got the parts in for the one of the uh, altimeters so we have one altimeter so that's the reason I'm not also why I'm not doing dual deployment today I don't have the secondary as the backup so today the thinking is is to put the main chute where the drogue chute goes use the engine ejection with a one second delay and test the apogee from the altimeter and it would in eject the main parachute out of the booster section and since we're only going 2,000 feet we've done other rockets with single deployment no problem then the idea was have put the drogue chute in the payload to test the altimeter and because we only have one it'll basically just demonstrate that it is working the black powder separates the nose cone the drogue chute would come out about 500 feet above the ground and cause it so small it's not going to really interfere with the um, the descent with the main chute so if everything goes well um, we hear it could be windy today so that could be an issue for us um, We'll test it out. This is the uh, altimeter bay. Um, you probably recognize at least the uh, the U-bolt and the bulkheads from the sled that we had put together some time back. Well, now what we've added is uh, this is the RRC3 altimeter from uh, Missile Works. This will be our primary altimeter. So what you have here is you have the altimeter, you have a place for the 9 volt battery, which is kind of a beefy connection. The, the, one of the biggest problems is with the acceleration and deacceleration. The battery can come detached, creating problems. So basically you got a, a 9 volt uh, DC connection here with the red and black that powers the board. You then have two outputs. One output is for the main chute and the other one is for the drogue chute. And in this case uh, the main chute are the blue wires and the brown chute is the drogue. So if this was flying, the first event would be this switch would uh, come on, the drogue. And it basically comes up through this connector here. This connector is only here so I can take the bulkheads off. It comes on the outside of the um, eBay. So these bulkheads keep all the electronics safe in the eBay compartment and at this attachment point we would 
have attached uh, igniter, it's called an E-match. The igniter comes all the way to these canisters. We have a primary and a secondary canister, so the primary is the secondary. So if we had the second altimeter, we would load both these. So you basically load black powder. We've calculated based on the volume of the booster section where the drug chute is, we need 2.3 grams of black powder in each canister. So we would attach with this uh, wire lug here an E-match comes over. This will have black powder, 2.3 grams unless we find today we need a different amount. We put the E-match down into the black powder. We pack this then with some uh, insulation just to pack it and tape this up with uh, like blue or masking tape. Uh, and so the idea is when that uh, initiates a charge it lights the match much like our uh, launches with the uh, igniters. This ignites, pops, uh, pressurizes the, uh, in this case, the booster section, and it would separate. So, booster, drogue, primary, secondary, so you could have two E matches here. On the other side, um, we have uh, the main chute. It too comes out of this through the blue wire. So when the altimeter detects 500 feet, it's pretty much the same setup. We have the main chute, uh, primary and secondary. So the primary in this case is the blue wire, which is on the right. It comes to an E match, and in this case the payload is smaller, so we calculate it's 1.5 grams of black powder in both canisters, um, pressurizes the uh, payload and ejects. And of course these U-bolts are where the shock cords connect. Um, we would always fly with both these canisters loaded. Uh, with the main, you only have one option and that's the eBay to do the ejection. So we always want two. I did go ahead and put two canisters on the drogue, but unless we go up to L engines, which I've been told do not come with ejection charges, um, some of them, um, everything up through J would have ejection charges for single deployment in the motor itself, which is what we've been using. Eight, so we'd only use just the primary drogue and have the engine uh, adjusted for about a one second delay such that this is the primary separation if everything works then the um, engine injection would just basically go off with the booster already separated and really no event so again this is the altimeter the primary the secondary will actually go on the bottom there's another piece of wood that we'll put on the other side, sled, mount it pretty much the same. It's the Stratologger. Um, it's actually a little smaller, but functions the same. It'll have its own 9 volt battery compartment. Now, the way all this works is this connection here goes to a rotary switch which we have put on the um, outside of the eBay. So it basically has a white wire inside. We'll connect the two white wires. And the idea is you load the black powder, you load the rocket, you pack the chutes, you go out to the pad, um, you get the rocket on the rail, you have it sitting straight up. Everything is done other than arming the um, the engine and you basically turn this switch and that will power up uh, the altimeter and you'll hear a beeping noise that confirms it's on and it beeps out a certain pattern to tell you if it's sensing it's got 
E matches for drogue and or main or both. Uh, if it beeps out three times repeatedly, that means you've armed it with a main chute and a drogue chute. Um, this is a four pole switch. So I had bought two switches, but I've tested this out. It can run actually both altimeters, so I'm going to keep it with just one switch. So other than the common switch, the altimeters will have everything redundant. Battery, wiring, canisters, lugs, everything. So complete backup secondary system. In the eBay, the altimeter has to be receiving outside air pressure and it needs to be very accurate. Uh, and of course when you got rockets going close to the sea, speed of sound or exceeding the speed of sound, if these holes are not accurately placed and sized, you can have either positive and negative pressure and then of course the altimeter is not getting an accurate reading and you could have problems with deployment. So missile work sends a calculation based on the volume of the eBay. All you care about is the volume between the two bulkheads. You calculate the size of the hole and then you determine if you want a single hole, two, three, four. It's recommended to have at least three because you want, you know, in case you get obstruction on one side of the rocket you got other holes feeding into the uh, cavity. Uh, I had read a lot of people using four, so I picked four. So you size the holes differently if you've got four versus three versus two. There's a calculation to do that. So um, I'll put a battery in this. I'll load it into this uh, eBay canister. I'll turn it on, let you hear it, and then show you how it actually loads in the rocket. Okay, so we've put the two bulkheads together. So this is the eBay. Uh, it sits in the rocket uh, in this orientation. I've put some cheater arrows on here so I know which way it goes. You can see the switch. Um, so this is the main side. Uh, you see the screws here that would actually bolt this to the payload because it never separates the sail payload. This is the pressure fit that would slide into the booster. And this is the injection side uh, for the drogue chute. So it sits like that in the rocket and it, yeah, I have the battery in the altimeter. So what I'll do is I'll turn it on. So assuming it was in the rocket and everything's ready to lift off, we would turn the switch and you hear a long beep which says the altimeter is on. Then there's a pause. And in this case, you're going to hear just one beep. And one beep says the altimeter is ready to take measurements. You can download the whole flight pattern, but it's basically telling you it's just going along for the ride because it's not detecting a E match for the main or the drogue because we've not armed this. So basically, when you put an E match in there, it senses continuity. Uh, for that switch and so it'll beep out so uh, one beep means no no e switch uh, two beeps means uh, one or the other three beeps means uh, I think the other combination four is uh, it senses an e match for both drogue and main <clears throat> I could have that wrong but I can correct that later so I'll turn this on so you just, just rotate the switch. It's a long beep. Tells you it's been armed. Long pause. So you'd be out the pad and you'd be waiting for this. And you're waiting for it to equalize, take its readings, reset, and determine how many E matches. So we get one beep, pause, one beep, pause, and this will continue um, until the rocket actually launches. So the altimeter senses liftoff, 
because it senses the rapid change in uh, pressure. So once it feels it's launched, it starts waiting to find that minimum pressure point and it responds very quickly and when it senses that and it starts increasing in pressure it knows it's reached apogee so it would then light the main uh, the drug chute deploy that then it takes a reference reading then it goes down counting down and senses where in this case 500 feet above ground level would be and it would then light the e match for the um, the main chute and if everything works well nose comb comes off it breaks the shear pins and the main chute comes out and it floats down pretty slowly calculate about 17 miles an hour with the main chute uh, to impact so I'll turn this off so the, to, to disarm it we just rotate the switch it goes off So I'm not sure if this makes sense, but anyway, we've got, as I showed earlier in a video, we have the, um, the main chute hooked to the nose cone. We have the shear pins. Um, comes down to the main chute, which is uh, already wrapped up in the Nomex, the fire protection. Since there's no hot point um, at this connection point there's no Nomex uh, shot cord protector so goes to the main with the Nomex and the main shooter connected goes to the rest of the way of the shot cord and then we have a Nomex um, protection because it will be black powder this is the the payload section of the eBay. You can see how I've hooked it there, and you can see the Nomex uh, connection. So the black powder there could, you know, eat away at the uh, shock cord so that Nomex protects it. Um, these screws will bolt to the payload such that this joint will never separate in the course of separation. So the main chute is here with the shear fins, and those come comes off. On the other end is the booster. Again, same thing. Uh, we had the shock core with the Nomex. It comes down. We had the drogue chute, much smaller. And since the last video, we did get another shock cord protector, much longer one, because it goes down in the booster. And the booster will obviously have the engine injection charge. Um, so you can see it goes all the way down there uh, to where the bulkhead is. We've shot that plenty of times. So that's everything separated. I'll put everything together, load the chutes, and uh, it'll be ready. So this is the rocket all put back together. Um, the software has calculated the center of pressure for us at 15.5 inches from the rear and physically finding the balance point the center of gravity is 31 inches from the rear so to have a stable rocket you want at least a separation between the center of pressure and that's controlled mostly by the pressure exerted aerodynamics of the fins relative to the structure of the rocket but you want the center of gravity ahead of the center of pressure at least the diameter of the rocket which in this case is four inches so you can see we have multiple uh, spacings here so we're up to a margin of three one is required three is almost overstable but obviously as you load engines into the rocket you bring more weight back here it'll pull the center of gravity back and you always recalculate to make sure your stability is uh, within the range it'll probably drop around about two two and a half in this case 
So we've loaded the parachutes. We've got the eBay in. As a test, we turn the switch on the eBay. Here, a beep confirming it's on. Again, there's no E switches. So we'll hear one beep in a minute. So now it'll beep just one time continuously. Um, I'll turn off. All right, so static test. Ready? Yeah. Jeez, Frank. All right. Yep. Okay, 1.5, 1.5, 1.3 quarter. Yeah. That's why doing a ground test is it so helps. cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Okay, you just saw on the video prior to this that we were testing the um, ejection charges. So the first one was ejecting the nose cone assembly with the bro uh, drogue chute in it. Well, I mean the main chute in it and detaching from the booster section uh, here. And we had calculated based on that volume, it was about 2.5 grams. Um, so it ejected, but it didn't pull the chute out. It didn't have quite the thrust. So in the second test, we tested the payload section, which calculated 1.5 grams. We added a half gram we told two grams for the payload and you saw in the video where the nose cone clearly came off went the full length of the shock cord it sheared the um, shear pins off exactly what we hope very clean cuts uh, I've since replaced those um, so you can kind of see what it looks like afterwards um, pretty dirty uh, you can see the igniter the e-switch still in there um, problem is the canisters just barely hold 2.5 grams so we're going to based on the test go up to 3 grams for the booster drogue chute at Apogee this side and the 2 grams proved to work uh, here uh, so these canisters are definitely too small when we put 2.5 grams pretty much at the top so it's hard to get uh, the packing so I'm actually gonna have to remove these unfortunately they're glued in place so hopefully we can take these off without being too messy and replace those with bigger caps so we can go with three grams but once we go through this this is a one-time test uh, then we would weigh out um, small containers of three grams and two grams respectively and then on the actual field, um, we would just be pouring the contents in. We would have to go through all the, the weighing and stuff like we did out on the field, which can be a pain. So I'll take this apart show the other side. So this is the payload section side. You can see here where the E-switch is uh, wired in 
to the connection our test wire was actually wired on this side of the block uh, you can see the switch the e-switch going down in the canister so we basically poured black powder over the e-switch put some insulation on top packed it and then taped it up with the painters tape got it pretty tight and um, again this one weighed out at calculated at 1.5 you can see I've written it there we went to 2 that one worked very nicely um, so I'm probably going to avoid having to change these canisters out and just change the ones on on this side to bigger caps probably can use a PVC end cap half inch and that would be enough volume a lot of people use that so I'm going to take this apart clean it up start working with it and hopefully the new altimeter will be coming in pretty soon and we can finish uh, hooking all this up for the next flight but um, due to the wind uh, we weren't able to fire the rocket so we haven't done its initial flight yet but at least we were able to um, um, test the injection charges and make all those changes so um, take the eBay out and um, next uh, video we'll hopefully have the second altimeter in bye till then alright so I took the uh, the end caps of the eBay off and on this side where we're going to change the canister I was able to just cut and grind those off pretty good so I left these two on because these are the payload and they should be big enough so I'll leave the eBay taken apart I'm going to get a piece of wood and put on the bottom to match the top so when the other altimeter comes in we can put it on the bottom and this is a, an e-switch so it's very much like an igniter uh, you got a tip that when it gets hot it burns this is actually down in the um, black powder canister like that so these are the two that came out just kind of illustrate what they look like they come with about um, oh, about 12 inches of wire on them this is a new one it's coiled they put the actual tip in the plastic um, the wires are protected you take this off you pull as much wire out you clip it off in this case we pull the, the red back exposing the igniter tip and we cut them pretty short because we don't need them that long so that's the eBay